Sylvia Gelman was a much-loved teacher and senior mistress in Mount Scopus from 1950 until 1970. And she maintained a vivid interest and connection to the college, to education, and to her former students until her passing a month ago at the age of 98. In a memoir that she wrote some time ago, she said that Mount Scopus Memorial College is like a living, breathing organism. Like a human being, it was conceived, it passed through an embryonic stage, it was born, it went through its childhood challenges, its terrible teens, and its adolescent attitudes, and has flowered into a bright and successful adulthood. And Sylvia said that some time ago, and I wonder if already then Mount Scopus was a successful adult, what is it now when it reaches the age of 70, the anniversary that we will be celebrating next year? Now, 70 is a significant number. In biblical and Talmudic literature, it often represents completeness. There were 70 judges in the Sanhedrin, the Supreme Court. Humanity was said to comprise 70 nations. And 70 represents a completeness for our school as well. As we saw a few moments ago, one of the highlights of 2018 was when the whole school came together for another 70, for Israel's 70th birthday. And every student from prep to year 12 gathered together to learn, to celebrate, to sing and dance, and to form an intense connection with the land, the people, and the state of Israel. But we also feel complete. We feel whole in the way that we articulate each of the strands of the mission statement. When we talk about excellence in learning, we congratulate last year's Year 12 on eight R scores that put them second in the state of Victoria, which out of 520 schools is not bad. <laughs> and we look forward to results this year. That wasn't supposed to be funny. <laughs> but, as we always stress, learning is much, much more than passing exams. And it's the qualities displayed by so many of our students who wish to learn, to discuss, to understand, to find truth and meaning, who give up time in recess, in free periods, Shabbatonim, to explore ideas, and sometimes even as one student in the current year 12 who was asked two years ago what she wanted to get out of the year 10 camp, and she replied, wisdom. Sometimes our students want to grow wise, and that is what we mean by excellence in learning. And we celebrate our all-round education. We congratulate our sports teams. This year, there were 132 teams entering EISM competitions, 24 runners-up, 19 premierships, the trophy at the Inter-Jewish School Snow Sports Competition, and a resurgence of Scopus Athletics, leading to the most improved school at the EISM Carnival. We celebrate our performing arts, a department that can put on a musical of the quality of The Little Mermaid, a play with the innovation in drama and in staging of Baskerville, a Sherlock Holmes mystery, and I must add, an occasion like tonight's Chagiga, which through a lot of hard work showcases our students' performing arts talents so very, very well. And we celebrate our Jewish life at Scopus. And some of the highlights this year were on Purim, where we introduced a Megillah reading by young women for young women. When we had a father-son bar mitzvah preparation, which was our biggest ever. When we welcomed to this very stage Ehud Barak, the former Prime Minister of the State of Israel. And we celebrate our innovations 
and our continuing programs in community service. And this year, we teamed up with Pekelech and our students prepared food for the homeless. Some of our musicians went to entertain patients in the oncology ward of Box Hill Hospital. And our volunteers gave up time at weekends and in holidays to work with women and children from the Sudanese refugee community. And a focus this year has been student well-being. And what we have tried to do is bring together, in a cohesive way, with continuity and progression, the many things that we've been doing which help our students become healthy, balanced, resilient, and empathetic individuals. From learning about digital citizenship, and bullying, and healthy choices, to the Project Biyachad, which brings together mentors from year 10 and mentees in year seven to form partnerships to help indeed both groups, but particularly to help those entering secondary school for the first time. And when we talk about well-being, it gives me an opportunity to make reference to a story that's been in our papers for the last week, suggesting that some schools want or don't want the rights to exclude certain students who don't fit into their community. Now, personally, I think this story is a bit spurious. I don't think there's a school in Australia that wants such a right or was ever used such a right. But it gives me an opportunity to remind our community that two years ago, we adopted an inclusivity statement. And we set ourselves a standard to ensure that we provide schooling which is free from any discrimination on grounds of gender, sexual orientation, race, health, disability, or socioeconomic background. And to provide an environment which is supportive and engaging for all members of our community. And that is the standard that we set ourselves, and that is the standard that we live up to in our school. And we feel complete when we talk about the Scopus community, the Scopus family. In fact, our family is expanding next year with the opening of our Little Learners program for two-year-olds. And it must be said that when one considers school students, alumni in ZUS, Parents Association, and our newly formed Grandparents Club, Scopus is not just a school, it truly is a way of life. But I want to address in particular the four key groups which are represented together in this auditorium tonight. We give thanks to the parents, our partners, who share with us their most treasured, treasured possession. That's you guys, by the way. And they share with us the task of helping our students grow and learn. And we never take that for granted. And when we work with the parents, and when we support each other, the results are quite beautiful. And we thank our volunteers who serve the school and help the school running in so many ways. But particularly, I'd like to thank the lay leadership of the school, of the Parents Association, the Council, the Foundation, and the Executive and their President, Amy Hershon, who worked tirelessly to hold the school to account, but to support it in every possible way. And I want to thank the staff. And the staff, by the way, includes more than teachers. It includes the cleaners who make our school look such a fine, an appropriate environment every day. It includes the maintenance staff who provide the facilities and make sure everything's in place, often without us noticing. It includes all the administrative staff without whom the school would simply cease to function. But it especially includes the teachers. The teachers in Mount Scopus who invest time, energy, passion, dedication. 
And the reason for that is because our teachers share in our students' achievements, who rejoice and celebrate as our students grow. And it's appropriate tonight to thank our teachers for making everything happen in the way that they do, because a school is about education, and education is about relationships, and relationships is about teachers. And finally, I turn to our students. It's absolutely true to say the students are the heart of the school, and they're the purpose why the school exists. In a sense, they are why we get up every morning. And I say to the students, I say to you, it is a privilege to help you learn, to help you grow, to help you achieve. And most of the time, it is a pleasure as well. <laughs> you are, in a very real sense, our future. You are why being a teacher, being an educator, is such a privilege because it is a job, a role, a vocation, unlike any other, that enables us, through you, to mold the future. When we think about the 70 years behind us, we look to you for the future and the next 70 years and beyond. The missionary in Pierre Caillabot says that 70 is a time for savor, which is translated as fullness of years. It's also related to the word sava, meaning satisfied. But we are not satisfied. Gratified, yes, but satisfied, no, because we are always striving for more. We are always striving with you for better. And so, as we reach the age of 70 years young, aware of our past, but focused on the future, we are still young and we are just getting started. Thank you very much.